Uh, g'day, this is just a quick rundown of the silver 6139 that you've sent me. Now, I've just actually just taken it apart in advance because this never works well on camera. I end up with bits flying everywhere and it, it's pretty embarrassing. So, um, I guess the first part that I'll start with is the dial. I'll just try to get that in focus. There we go. So, um, that's re the dial's in really good condition. It's probably the best one of these I've ever seen, um, which is good news. The um, bits just here. Let's get that into focus. That is some sticky oil. You can see that there. Now, I'll be able to remove that, and you won't see that again. Um, the spot there, I think, that's sticky oil as well. So... That's, let's get this back in focus again. Sometimes what I do is, um, when I'm showing something like this, I just have to go to the side because it's a bit hard to see through the, the camera, uh, the camera screen. So just having a look here as well, the hands, they need re-looming. That loom is all dead. Um, same with the markers, but, um, or indices, but I think they'll come up really well. Um, this one's got the original two-piece hand, which Seiko only used between 1969 and 1970. Um, flipping over to the back, the movement ran straight out, straight in, well, straight away as soon as I got it, and it's running now, which is a good sign. But I can see that it speeds up and slows down a lot, which means that there's probably some dry oil in there. Uh, in any case, it looks like it'll come up pretty well. Um, the movement's in really good condition, so there's not too much more to say about that. The case itself is pretty good. The, um, the ring inside there is basically uh, impossible to find. So what you want to look for with these watches is you want, to, you want that, the original colour. Um, if it's gone white or grey, they're really hard to really get to look good at all. Um, you can dye them if they're faded with some, uh, some uh, what do they call it, uh, dial-on or rit dye, uh, which will make it a few more shades darker, but generally they never quite look right. But they end up being, you know, 8.5 out of 10, which is better than having one that's quite faded. But this one's in very good condition. So just looking at the crystal, um, that's going to have to be replaced. So... Just looking on the side there, there's a lot of side chips and stuff like that and um, quite often I can get them polished if they're not too bad, which is cheaper than a new one. But uh, that's pretty much, to get a good result, you pretty much need to have no chips on the side and you can see there, yeah, it's Chip City. So that one will have to go, unfortunately. Um, beyond that, the gasket in the back's dead, we'll replace that. The uh, pushes are all, if I can get that into focus. Probably not. Hang on a sec. There we go. So, no, it's not going to focus there at all. But they're all full of crud, which will come out in the ultrasonic anyway, so it's not a big deal. Um, the retaining ring here, the other thing that vanishes on these is the spring that goes around there. It's either lost by a previous watchmaker or it's been rusted and not replaced. Um, I have seen some pretty creative repairs done on these before, but it's in place on this one, so we don't have to do anything. Uh, the pushes, they're dirty. If I can get that back into focus, but they're okay. Commonly they're bent like these are. Um, not too much of a problem. I straighten them as much as I can, but they still work even when they're quite bent. Um, the stem, if I can get that into focus. No, it's not going to happen. So, the stem there, that has been broken at the end, but we've still got the gear on there. It's missing the spring. Um, there's a little spring that goes on there, which is jammed between there and the crown. So, I'll have to make something to go on there. The crown itself, they're actually quite hard to get the originals, but I can get a good uh, replacement one that works quite well, so we'll probably have to go for that. 
Um, originals do come up, but you might be waiting for one for a while. So if you do want to go that way, we can we can do that, um, or we can put a um, generic one on and then go on the hunt for um, for a genuine one and change it later. That's another option as well. So. Um, but yeah, the stem, there might just be enough thread on there for me to get a stem extender. I'll have to try that, but if we have good luck with that, then that will save some money. Um, otherwise, you're looking at a new stem and they're not cheap. So the stems themselves, they're generally around 100 bucks. I managed to get a few, and um, I try to use them sparingly because they're really hard to get. The springs here, they're filthy, but that's pretty normal and they clean up okay. So um, that's where we're at with it. Um, it looks fairly good, so I don't think we're really going to have too many major issues. Um, but yeah, I'll keep in touch and let you know how we go.